Ed DeRosa with you from HRN HQ, soon to be with you from the Meadowlands, home of the Hambletonian, and with me to talk about the centerpiece race for the standard breads, at least in the States, is the internet's Ray Catolo. And Ray, before we go on, I feel like I have to match your sex appeal here, so I'm going to do a little unbuttoning too. And I've been saying this for years, if any thoroughbred person could match my sex appeal, I've been <laughs> begging for it to be you. Well... Now is our chance. Now is the industry's <laughs> chance for these two titans of each breed to come together. You'll have to have me on for a, a Breeders' Cup video maybe down the road, but I have you on now for the Hambletonian. You've given us a primer last mm -hmm. week. We entered Harness Land. I don't think everyone made it out alive, Ray, but those who did are ready to cash some tickets this weekend. Uh, undoubtedly harness land is not for the meek it's not for the faint-hearted but no matter what once you come through and then you make it through the other side it's like joseph campbell always says you become you become a better man any relation to john uh, you see i've asked him and i can't get a clear-cut answer no. and neither from jim Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the Campbell brood is uh, more than just the driver. And, and on top of that, I, I have to imagine all of the J's and the C's, they got to kind of be somewhat associated. That's true. That's some Illuminati stuff with those initials for sure, going back thousands of years, really. Maybe millions. Maybe millions. Uh, interdimensional travel could solve that. We're just looking to travel a mile with these trotters, though, Ray. We had the eliminations last week mm -hmm. and before we get into who you like specifically your handicapping of the race i had some questions as a handicapper not used to Shoot. these pps but obviously uh you know they're somewhat familiar enough as you discussed in your video and i think anyone who's been around racing long enough is dabbled here or there in, in either breed no matter which one they prefer uh i guess my first question is one thing that stuck out to me is looking at the Hambo limbs, and this applies to uh, Joviality S, Rebuff, maybe not so much, just two back was his gate to wire performance, but Cake Stand. I see several horses who shown speed before the limbs, and then in the limbs themselves uh, sat further back. Now, what is that a product of? It, there, there are several things. A lot of these drivers, when they're behind the gate, are reading the other drivers to determine what their move is going to be. Because if every horse on the gate has speed, it doesn't make sense for all of them to blast necessarily. And that's also because you got to finish within a certain number of positions to go to the big race. So there, you'll see a lot of people where if it's an elimination and they have maybe a bad draw and they've shown speed before, but then there's a ton of speed to their inside they're confident enough in their horse to try and get some kind of spot into the final. They might take a more conservative route versus being more aggressive and potentially costing themselves a chance to make it for a million dollars. Um, and you see that even beyond eliminations and stuff too. These horses, a lot of standard breads are quite versatile in that way where they, you, they, most of them can show some kind of speed off the gate. Of course, some are faster than others. Uh, but for the most part, many of them are quite maneuverable and, a lot of times it's just up to the driver and the situation behind the gate that determines that. All right. And uh, these posts are determined by uh, did the elimination finish position have anything to do with it? Or once you're in the final, it's a draw for the 10. So to incentivize uh, horses in the eliminations, the winner gets a protected draw between posts one and five. Uh, so that way you win the elimination and you don't, get post 10 and then you have people going why did i waste all of my horse just to get post 10. uh the meadowlands also recently has implemented a new i'm going to say algorithm even though it's more like a pattern where you have posts one through five for the first place finisher and then second place gets between posts one and six third place gets one and mm. seven and, and so on and so forth that way the better you finish the potentially better of a draw you can have but there's still that variance in the so, actual post draw so the inverse of the nba draft lottery i think that was their inspiration when they were sitting in their round table which i have to imagine they have to have one of those at the meadowlands yeah. maybe it's rectangular and quite long and corrals at the end of it they're conjuring a plan 
And, <laughs> and the first thing that comes to their mind is NBA draft. Draft lottery. Exactly. Yep. It kind of works. Uh, so question number two. Uh, I noticed the Alim winners uh, went both in 152 and two, but what I noticed regarding Rebuff, especially, uh, he did it at one to five, so mm-hmm. it's not a surprise at that price. 152 and two, his mark this year, also his lifetime mark, 149 and four. Uh, I was kind of surprised that there was a two to three second difference between his lifetime mark and the Alim. Uh, my kind of recollection of playing harness means he's capable of the sub 150. No one else has done that yet. Uh, like just on that alone, I kind of feel like he's the horse to beat, which the morning line agrees, but I, mm-hmm. I'm kind of thinking odds on is more likely than nine to five. Yeah. Well, the speed is a big thing that a lot of people tend to focus on uh, because in theory, if you can trot 49, everyone else trots 51, that's like a 10 length advantage. And so in theory, if you go to the front, you should be able to just roll away and beat everybody. Uh, but at the same time, you see that 52 mile, uh, you do know that that horse is capable of a lot more speed. And if you watch the replay, you can see that t Trick, who's driving rebuff is not necessarily asking him for everything he's got. A because the horse behind him fastens the wind. He's an he's an all right trotter, but he's he's not that kind of speed that say Temporal Hanover was when Rebuff was prompted to go forty nine and four. Um, so chances are, if he didn't have to go forty nine, he's not going to <laughs> because they're they're just trying to save whatever's in the tank for this big day, while also getting the benefit of the of the post draw. Um, but at the same time, too. He trotted 49 and four Hambo day. You know, we're in the sun. It's during the day. It's that muggy New Jersey (laughs) Hudson river air. Sometimes you see horses go even faster than that. And they're able to match that speed. Sometimes you see weird stuff happen. Like I remember a couple of years ago, a trotter named father Patrick, who was the big favorite and everyone thought couldn't lose made the only break of his career behind the gate. I saw him as a two year old at Mohawk. Oh, did you? Yeah. Why were you at Mohawk? They let I you in. Went, uh, yeah, he. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's a two. I mean, he was so much faster than everyone else as a two-year-old. Mm-hmm. At least at that point, it was summer, so he probably hadn't even run or, excuse me, raced that many. Thank you. Thank he hadn't you. raced that many times. So mm-hmm. yeah, the only time he ran was Hamiltonian. Yeah, and you don't want to run on that day. <laughs> no, you don't run on that day at all. No. Okay. So yeah, that was. And then somewhat similar to looking at the final time, but final quarter times, very big, at least in harness PPs. I don't know how much they actually get used by real handicappers that mm-hmm. put real money on these races, but they've been in the PPs as long as I can remember. Uh, 26 and two for Jiggy Jog S. He was a closing winner, though, in his alim, whereas Rebuff had pretty much taken control. He came home in 28. Uh, how much weight do you place and sort of how fast a horse can come home? Well, the first thing is Jiggy Jog is actually one of two fillies in this race. And last time we've seen two fillies, I don't know the last time there's been two fillies in the Hamiltonian yeah. final because uh, Joviality is the other one. But in terms of final quarters, there, there are several things you consider because a lot of times if a horse gets a covered trip, you'll be able to see them go a faster final quarter than, say, a horse that's maybe on the lead or uncovered and doing some kind of advance. Uh, so when we're looking at those numbers, 26 and 2 is super flashy, but we look at the trip Jiggy Jog got, she was locked at the cones the entire way. She only had to make that one move. So it tells you that horse does have a high throttle. But what we don't know is what kind of speed is she capable of if she's not given that kind of perfect trip. So that's those are the questions that we're balancing when it comes to, you know, whatever odds we see her at on the board relative to the rest of the complexion of the race. But for the most part, you know, final quarters tell you what the horse is capable of speed wise. And you just have to consider every other element that went into them being able to go that fast. And once you're entered in the limb, you're locked in, correct? Jiggy Jaw could not have decided after winning her limb, oh, we're going to go to the Oaks. Even even if the owner uh, scrolled down the entries and accidentally hit Ambo, they're in the Hambo. <laughs> yeah, no, because uh, in Thoroughbred, like 
we qualify, so to speak, for Derby and Oaks on the flat mm-hmm. side of things. And your qualifying points, if you're a female in a Derby prep, can apply to the Oaks. Uh, same with Breeders' Cup winning your end stuff. But yeah, J- J- Jiggy Jog and Joviality, they were locked in once they entered those limbs. Yeah, and they were able to enter the Hambo because they were eligible for the Hambo Oaks. There is a clause where the Phillies okay. are able to enter if they're made eligible. Would to- either of them be the favorite in the Oaks? I Joviality would be the outstanding favorite in the Oaks. Okay. Off of that elimination last week, though, it's it's tough to tell if she would still hold that favoritism, especially because there's a Philly named Warwizinia, uh, especially with the Canadian connection, who's getting a lot of attention from that swift final quarter she put in. But in terms of resume and class and talent, joviality would stand out over all those okay. fans. Yes, and I, I made another harness mistake. I said the S, but in naming for standard breads, that means, is that foreign bread? Yes, that means that horse is from Sweden. We have Sweden. S for Sweden, F for FR for France, and for New Zealand. It, it could be A for French. Australia. A for Australia. Okay, I've seen that. But Canada is treated as... Yeah, they don't do C for Canada. We yeah, just kind of I, treat it like America. I didn't think so. Well, I mean, you know. They don't like it when you say that. No, but they also don't like it when you say they still answer to the queen. So, And yet, when she calls on the phone, what, what do they do? They what answer. Do they do? Yeah. I let her go to voicemail. They pick it up. Oh, yeah. Humble her a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, those, those were my general questions. So let's actually get to how to bet this race. Uh, like like I said, I was thinking, especially Hambo Day, you actually get some casual money. It'll be on track. I'll be among them. Uh, people wagering. Rebuff sticks out to me just off that time that's, I think, two, uh, at least the second, almost the second faster than everyone else's, mm-hmm. joviality being the closest. And then there's the drop off. Uh, this is part of a cross country pick five. Uh, for those who don't live in New York. Uh, so, you know, this this has some applicability. I'll be singling life is good. And uh, just kind of curious if I need to go any deeper than rebuff. I, I will say in that cross country pick five, because I also saw Matt Areas in the test in that sequence. It seems like a lot of thoroughbred races are kind of chalky. So yes. it looks like a lot of the value you can find in the Meadowlands races, especially the Oaks, but we're not talking about that right now. Right. You can check Horse You'll Racing Nation. That's yeah. right. You can check my write up for who the big price is in the Hamburg. Right Oaks. there. At, at that website. Wow. It, it almost looks like you're censoring me right now <laughs> by trying, not, you're trying not to get me to say it. Um, but in terms of the Hambo, Rebuff certainly does stand out. But at the same time, one piece of information that a lot of you know people who aren't exposed to harness won't have is on this day specifically, many trainers pull the shoes on horses because the surface is sound, it's swift, and you will see horses go faster as a result. So we look at Rebuff, for example, Lucas Wallen's a trainer would probably do that. That might benefit him and get him closer to that speed that we've seen him demonstrate before. Marcus Melander, certainly a trainer that would do that. Nancy Tactor, a trainer that would do that. Mm-hmm. I say this because... You know, when you do when you make a change like that, where we haven't seen the performance for those horses under those conditions, we can see them put in a race they've never done before. Because, again, this is the race they're all training for. So no matter when as they're progressing up, if they're finishing third and second and they're and they're getting involved when they go behind the gate, we can see someone (laughs) just come out of nowhere And on top of that, with rebuff to the inside, everybody knows he's the horse to beat. And Marcus Melander has an interesting setup here in this race because he has temporal handover, he has periculum and joviality. Temporal handover is a real speedball. I can't imagine this guy not going for the front. And with rebuff to the inside, his only MO, I have to imagine, is to try and push forward. And so that can mean he either gets to the lead or he gets into a position where he has to go first up. And those, if he's the best horse in the race, he can handle that. But I, right. me as a better, I don't, I don't like, I don't like those conditions. I, I, to me, it feels like at that point he's the most vulnerable he's ever been. And if he's at one to five in a vulnerable spot, I want to try and find some value. Absolutely. Joviality, for one, is a fantastic filly. She's always been a fantastic filly. It seems like from this spot, she's going to get her best setup, which is coming from off the speed. 
She's not one that usually likes to go to the front. She sometimes gets a little lazy, sometimes even overly aggressive, and then kind of tires herself out through the mile. But when she has a target, she locks on and she goes. Same time, too, we have King of the North, who also is exactly like that. And last year on Hambo Day, when they went way too fast in the Peter Houghton, he flew down the track to get by everybody and win as the decisive favorite. He's still as good as he was as a two-year-old, if not even better. I say all this basically to say, you either you you can single rebuff if you want. I don't think there's value there. To me, there's value in using a horse like Joviality. There's value in a horse using like King of the North. Jiggy Jog, I can't, I feel like she's going to get a ton of play off the elimination win. Uh, looks like money, at least if we're not talking cross country pick five, I'm really intrigued by looks like money as a horse vertically, because there is also high five wagering in this race too. Uh, Cause yeah. you have the post 10 element, uh, Nancy Tactor. Exact the wagering. And oh, there's gotta be exact the wagering. Have you ever seen <laughs> no exact the wager? You can only bet the top five. <laughs> we want to make this as hard for you as possible. Um, but yeah, like lo looks like money to me from that outside post has just been getting better and better. He's always done well at this track. He's been a project horse for the tactors over the last couple of months. And he's going to be a massive price from that outside post. He had a real sneaky good elimination where he had nowhere to go and was just trying to slip through the inside just to make the final. So in terms of cross country pick five, I think value on the wind end is in joviality. You can even single joviality. I feel like King of the North offers an interesting price and a, and is one who can potentially get it. Ray Schnicker, of course, won this race in 2008. Um, but then vertically, I'm looking at horses like looks like money who can somehow sneak into it. Cake stand might even be able to get in for a piece of it. I'm I'm kind of targeting the fade rebuff angle simply because if he is the best horse in the race, then everyone else is right, and I don't care at that point. <laughs> I'd rather, as a better, I'd rather be the one in the minority who's right. Now, it, the, let's say we get to race 15, the board opens up, and rebuff actually is 9-5. to five. Is that a change in strategy for you? I think it would be relative to, say, like if joviality is 2-1. to one. Uh, because then at that point, I have to wait the horse who I feel is my top contender based off the setups I see versus the horse who up to that point has proven themselves the best. And like I said, too, we got to remember with these kinds of races specifically, we're looking at progression and we're trying to extrapolate beyond that. We can see everything the horses have done, but we have to consider what they might do based off of each little step they've taken from every start. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a ceiling for a lot of them, and you can maybe decipher that from the past performances. But in the Hamiltonian million-dollar race, a bunch of people are going to be tinkering with things. I know – I think well, – no, not Rabat. I was thinking Manon. That's the Oaks. We're not going to mm -hmm. talk about the Oaks. That's on the website. We're going to talk about the Oaks. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're making equipment changes on Manon. But Rebuff, I think, is staying steady off that elimination. Win. Okay. So I is uh, taking the shoes off like when a swimmer shaves before their big meet? I, I think I think that's that's a good way to put it. You you shave you shave at least like a fifth of a second, two fifths right. of a second. You're Jody Jameson in a full second. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so it does sound like joviality sort of top contender, and then King of the North. Would you say is kind of second in your mind? Not yeah. even like picking second, but just in terms of like who you're excited to see the board and hoping to get the the price on him. Yeah, um, in, in in my mind, this this race sets up for joviality. I feel like there are so many conditions that put her in the prime spot, and at that point, it's whether it, it's it's her race to lose, and Rebuff might certainly make her lose. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the gamble we have to take in this situation. But King of the North is a legitimate horse. He's always been good. He. You know, two starts back, lost the Stanley Dancer to a horse that just slipped up the inside, but he fought everyone else off gamely. You can, of course, ask yourself how how great that field he beat was, because I think some of them didn't even make the Hambo final. Um, mm. But I don't think Slay made Yeah, Slay didn't make the Hambo final either. So then uh, you, there's like maybe a class question there, but the form for King of the North has always been there. Looks like money has continuously been showing sneaky good talent, and he's just kind of a head case. But from that outside post, and again, with a bunch of other horses that feel like they, they're they still trying to figure themselves out, 
and are a lot and are a lot bigger question marks in my mind joviality is the firmest horse to beat king of the north is the horse that's shown himself as capable and it looks like money is the kind of the not the x factor the z factor i guess but not like the snooze factor right that way (laughs) But it just like uh, literally the only horse we have not mentioned is cool Papa Bell. Is he the most <laughs> is he the least likely winner? Uh you see, I I could say that, and then of course that makes him the horse to beat. You want like that, that that's usually the way it goes. I for one was surprised that he made the Hambo final. If you remember the video I did, I didn't even have him in my top ten. Um sure. just because I didn't think off of those few races he had in New York that he would fit into that echelon but he proved it that middle post he's primed to get some kind of good trip i don't think he has the same kind of speed though that some of these other ones do and we look back to say like the 2020 hambo even though that was one where you know everything got shut down and so training kind of got interrupted for a lot of horses but you look at that final it was down to three horses who were just clearly faster than anyone else you even look back to the year trixton won over nuncio though those two horses were just faster than everyone else um a, a lot of times the cream kind of rises to the top and the only thing you're trying to look for is the hidden cream <laughs> <laughs> like like when you have the crisp when you have the tasty cake and you know what's inside but you don't know how deep inside it is no yeah you gotta there's only one way to find out you gotta take the bite you gotta dive in that's right yeah all right. Well, that's the Hambo field. Definitely looking forward to putting some of this in action uh, and watching you in action. I'm sure you'll be uh, whizzing around. Are you helping out with notes and such? I, I, I'm probably not going to be whizzing around in public, but I'll be I'll be walking and <laughs> and lack of days in all, all around. I'm doing some press on Saturday, so I'll be Beautiful. up in the press box and I'll be mingling among my loving fans. There. <laughs> There will be many, I'm sure. Uh, so me. I'll be there Friday and Saturday. A lot of races over the two days. Give me the flatbed angle when I'm watching the board. Like, oh man, you, if you see this at 15 to one, just have a gamble. Uh, I always say, look at look at hidden speed. Like, really, really look at horses and look at those first quarters and where the position and the positions they have on the gate and stuff like that. And see which horses the betters are not expecting to blast. Um, you can find that either with like who's driving the horse, because we know people like Jingra and Dunn and and the McCarthys. They're willing to push a horse off the gate. Um, and on top of that, this is something where if you watched replays, Ed, uh, you'd be able to see some drivers sometimes even hold their horses back a bit because they decide I don't want to go. I want to try my luck from the back. Um, but for the most most part, hidden speed at the Meadowlands tends to do quite well, especially since this is a game where the closer you sit to the front, the more likely chance you have to win the race. Sure. All right. No passing lane at the Meadowlands, right? Uh, some races, yes. Yeah, some races, no. <laughs> it depends how tired the horse gets. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. All right. But the, yeah, but there's there's not the physically no. Yeah. Yeah. It Do those even stuff. exist anymore? I know they got yeah. rid of them at some tracks. Yonkers got rid of its passing lane. Northfield still has a passing lane. Mm-hmm. All of the Pennsylvania tracks still have their passing lanes. Um, I think Ocean Downs has a passing lane. Mm-hmm. Rosecroft, I think, does. M- m- many of the small – mile tracks don't no have No passing them. lane here. Oh No, not not at the jug. No. No, they, they don't – they just need those turns, the angle of, like, the Talladega ones. <laughs> The, 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 the only the only hardest track is like a NASCAR. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's something. Have you been? I've never been. No. And I hope to be one day. I'm really trying. It's it's a spectacle. Yeah, I especially. encourage everyone to check it out if you can. Uh, well, I've always said harness racing and Ferris wheels belong together. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. I think of it as the food trucks there. There, there, yeah. There, there's some food trucks usually at harness tracks too. Yeah. There might be food trucks on Saturday. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's like a lace track staple now. I, I will say if you're if you're in East Rutherford, because I saw your question for food, my recommendation is always Lindhurst, the Colon Diner. Colon called, like the body part? Well, okay, it's called the Colonial Diner, but some of the oh, lights okay. don't work. So it's the Colon Diner. <laughs> and contrary to the name. The food doesn't run through you. Okay, it's, so it's, it's not good a skyline diet. situation. It, no, you're not. You're not shooting for the skyline off of this chili. Got it. All yeah. right. 
No, I'm uh, looking for. I haven't been to Jersey in seven years, so looking forward to being back. And eh, not much has changed. <laughs> what the thought? All right. Well, he's the internet's Ray Catolo. I'm Twitter's EJXD2. Hamiltonian, your picks will be up on Horse Racing Nation, my videos and whatever else I conjure up. Hopefully none of Ray whizzing <laughs> at the Meadowlands. That's but, premium content that will be on the website. <laughs> that's that's only fans only, but uh, certainly <laughs> certainly wagering uh, hijinks in abundance with all these races, including the million-dollar Hamiltonian Saturday at the Meadowlands. Good luck. <laughs>